Steven here, and I'm going to try to help you um, come up with a cool strategy for solving these puzzles where the code is all scrambled up. Um, the, the directions on the side usually will give you the overall strategy, which is that you should first go into Minecraft and experiment with the mod you're supposed to write, just see what it does, see how it works, and then you're going to want to unscramble the code. But, you know, that's easier said than done. But let, let's, let's start um, by following those directions. I'm going to do time set day here so that we don't get attacked by zombies. And then, let's see, we want to run the spawning entities mod. How did I know that? Because it says that right there. It says use the spawning entities mod in your mod chest. Um, so this is a, kind of like a mystery mod. We don't know what it does until we use it. Uh, I think it probably has something to do with spawning entities, but we don't know exactly what. Uh, well, okay, uh, actually, it turns out, oh, okay, it did, it did spawn a creeper and five diamond blocks, one on top of each other. I think that's what it did. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, I see. So it's actually, it's five diamond blocks with a creeper on top, I think. And see, and this, this is going to happen to you too. You're going to have to run the mod several times just to try to see what it does. But yep, it does appear to be a tower of blocks with a creeper on top. So one, two, three, four, five, then a creeper. And so if you've done some uh, some of the other badges, you should kind of have an idea that in order to do this, you need to use a drone and move that drone up, making diamond blocks, and then one more time and make a creeper. So that's kind of the idea of the code. Now, if it's if you're a beginner coder, that isn't necessarily easy uh, to write, but that's where the scrambled code comes in. The fact that all the blocks here will help you out. And just as a hint, when it's easy mode, there is not a single block missing, and um, and all of the blocks here are used in the code. So that means you don't need to delete any of these blocks, and you don't need to get any extra blocks even though you could. So we're just going to use what's on the canvas right here. So step one, find the main function, always. That's, that would be step one if I was writing this code, is I would write the main function. So make sure it's there. Sometimes blocks get, get, uh, get outside of your the window you're on, so you have, kind of, have to kind of drag around and make sure that you're not missing anything. But I think we have them all. So what I like to do is unscramble it piece by piece. We know that at some point we need to put down a diamond block, right? So let's do that. I, I know this line of code will create a diamond block. And I, I know that you can't do this until you have created a new drone. Where's our new drone block? Oh, there it is. New drone. It's right there. And then we need to set D to new drone. Oops, right there. So... I like to solve this in little pieces where the pieces are the smallest amount of code that I can test. So this this is an amount of code that I can actually test because it makes a drone and places a block so when I run it I'll be able to tell if it did what I think it should do. Now the question is what do you do with all this other code? Well what I like to do is actually just disable the blocks to start with. So I'll actually disable every other block just so that the mod will run. If you don't, like let's say I um, let's say I have a stray block here, when I press mod and go back into Minecraft, it won't work. It'll probably give me an error right when it tries to load. Let's see. Scrambled test. Let's try to run scrambled test. Well, actually it did work. Um, but sometimes, sometimes having stray blocks around will cause problems. Like, actually, just for example, if I, uh, yeah, so if I hadn't disabled this block, I would have gotten an error. So when it loads, yeah, there it is. There's an error in my code right when it tries to load. So just to be safe, you should probably disable all the blocks... Disable, disable, and 
disable. So now I have a bunch of disabled blocks, and then I have the smallest piece of code that I know will do something. And as we saw earlier when we tested it, it made one diamond block. So we're certainly on the right track, I think. But we need to make five diamond blocks, and I don't have five of these lines. So that should be telling you, and if, and you should know this if you've been doing the, uh, the badges leading up to this one, that you're going to need a loop. So let's go ahead and enable the loop. So here's a loop. It's probably going to be around this line. And it's going to happen five times, and luckily I have a number five right here, so that's probably going to go right in there inside the, the repeat loop. Let's enable the five. So I know that that'll make five diamond blocks. Now I could test that, but um, actually let's go ahead and test that. Because what you really should do is test often when you're solving a puzzle like this. You want to see if you're on the right track. So let's do that. Okay, that did not do what you might think it should do. It looks like it should, the code looks like it's going to repeat five times, place a block. And that is what it does, but since the drone doesn't move, it just places a diamond block five times in the exact same spot. So it really just looks like you placed one. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, here's a, here's a block that will move the drone up. So let's enable that. And now here's a question. Do we move it up and then place the block? Or do we place the block and then move it up? It's hard to know unless we go back and, and test the, uh, the correct mod again. Like we need to look at exactly how it's working. But for right now, let's just do this and, and just see if it does build a tower. Yep, there we go. Built a tower. And as you can see, the progress bar is, uh, is completing as well. But, you know, if you get really good at this, you shouldn't even need the progress bar. So I'm going to just pretend it's not there. All right, what happens next? Um, well, this builds a tower. And then... Oh, I see. Uh, so there's a direction, move direction forward that needs to go somewhere. And I bet you if we run spawning entities, we see that it, it builds the tower out in front of us. And so I'm betting that that... Um, move forward actually goes um, goes at the beginning of the code. Let's see what happens here. So if I run this here, I bet you we'll see the tower spawn five blocks out from that. Yeah. Yeah, so it actually moves the drone out five, then builds the tower, then puts a creeper on top. So that's an important thing to know. I didn't notice that at first. I had to had to run it again, and that's totally fine. You're allowed to run the example as many times as you want, and you're allowed to run your code as many times as you want. I usually run both of them several times when I'm solving something like this. So let's enable this one. This one's going to go at the beginning. Right after we create the drone, it moves forward five, builds a tower, and then puts a creeper on top. Let's go ahead and enable that. And enable that. Now, we happen to get it right, 100%. But what if we hadn't done it exactly right, if we put inverted these two? Um, well, we might just be able to start making little changes here until the progress bar got to 100%. But, um, like I said, when you get really good at this, you shouldn't even need the progress bar. So, um, So let's pretend that you got here and you're like, ah, it's exactly right. This is where you want to run the sample, the correct mod and your mod several times and look for minor differences. So here here would be the, um, the correct mod. And here would be, I don't think I press mod. Let's do that. That is important. So pressing mod. Back to game. And now, okay, so I just ran the sample mod. And now let's run our mod. Yeah, and see, there is a slight, slight difference. And you, you notice that the sample mod, I destroyed one of the blocks, but what the sample mod did was it moved forward and then built a block right there and then moved up. Whereas ours, if we dig into the ground right here, we see it didn't build one right there. It moved forward five 
then moved up and started building. Man, that creeper's going crazy. It moved forward five, then moved up one, and then started building. And that is because the first thing in the loop is to move up one. So that would tell us that there's something different about how ours is moving and that it moves up a little too early. And so that would be a hint that we should reverse these and that would allow us to complete it even if we didn't have the progress bar. You shouldn't rely too much on the progress bar. In fact, in, in higher difficulty levels, we'll be taking the progress bar out. So, um, so what you really should be trying to do is understand how your code is working and you need to be developing the ability to run um, the correct code and understand how it must be working even though you can't see the code. So there you go. Um, that's my strategy. Uh, just to review it, you can um, disable blocks, and that's really, really, really helpful. Um, and that allows you to build up your correct answer a few blocks at a time. And uh, what else? Oh, yes. And then just don't forget you're allowed to test the correct mod and your own mod as many times as you want. Uh, like I said, I usually test both of them several times while I am solving this puzzle. So this was a pretty short puzzle without much code, um, and it was still kind of a challenge, and they get even more challenging. So you're going to have to be very, very methodical and do lots and lots of testing um, to solve these puzzles. Good luck!